Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hi, to the 3.7 Meta Roundup. Now, I do not like the this. I think it is not very poggers. I'd even call it suboptimal. That's right. This of this is like the worst one we've had in a while. It is more difficult than basically any other abyss we've ever had. But on top of that difficulty, a lot of the ways in which it's difficult, a lot of the things that are used to make it more difficult, aren't really like engaging. They're just annoying and RNG and cringe. And I am not a huge fan. I know that a lot of people are struggling to 36 star who were, uh, who were fine doing it before. So I hope that uh, if, if that's you, if you're if you're struggling to 36 star now, I hope you can learn uh, a few tips here and there that can help you potentially get that 36 star back. But if you don't 36 star, just know it's not necessarily because you're playing poorly. A lot of things in this abyss are just very limiting. And if you don't have the right units built, it will not feel nearly as good. The first chamber, you've got six Whopper Flowers and six Constructs that spawn in waves of three. And then in the second half, you've got two Abyss Mages and then three Heralds. This is the worst chamber, and usually if you can three-star this, you can probably three-star the other two. That being said, it is possible that you struggle with chamber three because you don't have teams that can easily slot in all of the elements that you need to break the Baptist shield while still having a strong enough first side to clear the Consecrated Beast somewhat quickly. Chamber two, you have Jade Plute Terror Shroom followed by Thunder Manifestation, and then chamber three, right, it's two waves of Consecrated Beasts, so four in total. Total. And then the Baptist. Now, Baptist will have a Crow Shield, a Hydro Shield, and a Pyro Shield, and they will always be in that order. You can use that to try to build your teams in ways where you will be able to break those shields. The way that the Baptist works is he shields up basically as soon as he as he spawns with his first shield. And then once you break the shield, you have a few seconds where you can hit him. And then he shields with a different shield again. And once you've been through three shields, you'll have a slightly longer DPS window where you can hit him. I think the Baptist is actually a pretty well-designed enemy. I was a little bit scared of it at the beginning, but he has a lot less HP than other bosses. The Equitus Baptist has around 1.4 million HP. You compare it to something like the Primo Geovisha, who would have 2.7, 2.8. It's basically half of the um, the HP that a Primo Vishap would have. And so basically, the fact that you are losing DPS when it's shielding is actually balanced out by the fact that it is squishier. It's actually the first enemy that they've released in a while that actually feels like it was balanced properly. This chamber is, I guess, the bottleneck in this abyss. There's going to be two Abyss Heralds, Frostfall, two Crow Heralds, and one Hydro Herald. Now, the reason why, in my opinion, this is like really f shit compared to previous abysses where we have had three heralds slash lectors is that every time that we've had multiple lectors or heralds before it was either only two of them with the same element or it was three of them but they had different elements and more importantly two of them were ranged now the reason why that matters a lot is because the melee ones the heralds right the the, the lectors are, are ranged and the heralds are melee the heralds have a lot of attacks that will make them move, whereas the lectors do not. The lectors, as long as you're in range of their attacks, will stay where they are and just keep shooting at you and whatever. Whereas the heralds won't, which means you don't have a way to keep them grouped. You have to rely on their attack pattern RNG to line up well with each other in ways that will keep them grouped together, which is where a lot of RNG comes in and which is where most of my frustration with this abyss lies. There are ways to get past them and obviously we'll go into all of that but I just wanted to take a little a little bit to talk about how much I don't like this abyss right now oh yeah also if two of them do an attack very closely together you're gonna have to choose either I dodge the first attack and I get hit by the second or I get hit by the first attack and then I will also get hit by the second so that second attack can actually end up being guaranteed damage unless you run away from them in which case well if you had any circle impact stuff well they're melee so they're gonna run after you so you can't really go back to that anymore and even if you didn't running away l makes you lose a lot of time so if you're if your dps isn't that high if you're struggling a little bit with the dps requirements that's a reset so what are the ways in which you can get past this well mainly you can use animal units in order to swirl the cryo from the from the cryo herald into the hydro herald however these 
Spurs can have underlying hydro because their shield isn't actually cryo, it's frozen. And once they have underlying hydro, if you hit them with animo, it won't swirl cryo anymore, it's gonna swirl hydro. Which means that if you f up in any way, you're basically gonna stop swirling cryo altogether. Even if you're doing this, you're still gonna need a way to deal with this one, right? And that's basically always gonna be pyro. If you're not bringing an animal unit, or if you are bringing an animal unit, but you don't think it's enough, then you will want to bring either a dendro or a cryo unit in order to be able to get past this shield. Because of that, and because of the fact that these guys have a lot of cryo or frozen units on their shield, it's rough actually breaking them. You need a lot of pyro application. And because of that, most good teams on the second side of this abyss will use Bena. And a very large portion of good teams will also be using Tamling. This is an abyss that really restricts your team building and heavily incentivizes unit Bena Tamling on the second side. It's not the only thing you can do. You can just slap Bennett on basically any team just as a healer with a three unit core or just another team where Bennett can be good. But I'd say that it's generally the best way of getting past these shields because it's basically the fastest non-cheese way of breaking the breaking the cryo shields. That's gonna heavily skew what teams are considered good this of this. If a team can't deal with, or if an archetype can't deal with the second side properly, they have to be on the first side. And the first side is a heavy AoE here and still two enemies here, which really makes single target teams struggle a lot more than usual this of this. Anyways, now that we've got this out of the way, let me open a new sheet with all of the archetypes that I want to talk about. So let's basically go through them one at a time and talk about the good things and the bad things about them this abyss. We'll start with Nilo Bloom. This abyss is very bad for Nilo. That being said, it is still somewhat playable because the worst chamber for Nilo, right? Obviously, you don't want to play her on the second side because dealing with this shield is going to be basically impossible. Technically, yes, it is possible to brute force it through damage alone. With a C0 Nilo, that's not happening. Like, don't do that to yourself. If you're playing her, you want to play her on first side. The chamber that's like the worst for her is this one, but because it is the easiest of the three chambers, then it's not that bad. Chamber three is not ideal for her because obviously higher dendro resistance, but you can still brute force it if like, cause it's still two enemies. So you still have pretty good damage. If you have a good way of getting through this really quickly, uh, you can get away with Nilo teams this abyss, but they're generally not going to be optimal. And most of the, I mean, most of the time you're going to want to have Nahida on your Nilo team, but I'd argue that if you have Nahida, it's very difficult to justify not using her on the second side. So you're probably going to make your second side weaker by using your Nilo team. Oh, either that, or you're going to play Nilo without Nahida, which is going to make your first side a lot weaker. It is still playable, right? Like obviously there are many teams that can get past second half without Nahida without much of a problem. But this is definitely probably the worst abyss we've had for Nilo in a while. Normal Bloom has the same problems, except it's worse. So yeah, no. Okay, Burgeon. Here's the thing about Burgeon. Burgeon is actually really good this abyss, but it's not because Burgeon is good this abyss. <laughs> Basically, the reason why Burgeon is good this abyss is because Pyro is very good on the second side and Dendro is really good on the second side. And you don't want to play Burning. <laughs> Because of that, Burgeon is just really good because most teams that slot in a Pyro and a Dendro unit that are not garbage are Burgeon teams. It's not just the traditional Burgeon teams though. I know that a lot of people are playing Nahida National, which is not really a traditional version of a Burgeon team because you're applying too much Pyro and Dendro and not enough Hydro to actually be able to get a lot of C generations. But because there's such a high shield breaking check and the DPS check itself is not quite as high, then losing a bit of damage through that isn't that huge of a deal. Virgin shines a lot in this abyss just because of the fact that you have a lot of elements and they deal with all the different shields very well, right? You have a, the best element to deal with the Cryo Shield in Pyro, the best element to deal with Hydro Shield in Dendro, and the best element to deal with the Pyro Shield as well in Hydro. On top of that, the enemies in the second side do not have increased Dendro resistance, whereas the enemies on the first side do uh, on Chambers 2 and 3. All in all, in this Abyss version is a lot better than usual, and for a lot of people, they're gonna want to try to give a Burgeon team a try. Hyper Bloom. Hyper Bloom is not that great this Abyss because the first side is so AoE heavy and while Hyper Bloom can be reasonable in AoE, it's not a team that's designed for AoE necessarily and uh, the enemies have high dendro resistance. 
And then on the second side, it's very difficult to get through this without using a pyro unit. It is doable, right? You can do stuff like, well, you, basically, you can basically abuse Fischl's A4 to break the cryo shields at a reasonable pace. Because of that, Hyperloom teams generally not the greatest. However, because Hyperloom teams have such a high like floor in terms of the damage that they do, you can play a three unit Hyperloom team. You can play like, I don't know, Nahida, Kuki, Singto, right? And you can still meet the DPS checks. And what that lets you do is it lets you slot in something like Bennett as your last slot to be able to go get through the shield. And if you want to be using your Hyperloom team, you can get through things that way. Yeah, you can also slot in Fischl as that last slot, which will help you break the shield at an actual reasonable pace, won't really steal your Hyperblooms too much, and because you're still playing a Hyperloom team, you most of your damage is Dendro, not Electro, against the Thunder Manifestation. However, as we'll talk about when we uh, go down a little bit, there's a lot of um, a lot of good stuff in the first side that involves Fischl, so it might not be where you want to be using her. Mono Pyro, here's the thing, right? Usually, Mono Pyro is is this with a flex. The thing is, you're gonna have, like, it's gonna be very good against this. Obviously, you'd probably do this on second half, right? It's gonna be very good against this. Once you get here, you're gonna cry because the pyro shield is gonna be basically unbreakable, so you'll have to wait until it goes down by itself, which slows you down a lot. The thing is, what's stopping you from your last slot being Sing so? <laughs> We're basically just playing Mono Pyro, but it's not. You're playing National, actually. Or even just any other Hydro unit. Because usually you should be able to get enough damage to pass the DPS checks with these, assuming they're reasonably built. But yeah. Uh, I guess that's true. Well, you can also try to let yourself get hit on Kazuha during the Hydro Shield, and then use his burst after you've broken the Hydro Shield, but before the enemy gets his Pyro Shield so that it infuses Hydro and you can break it with that. But uh, don't do that to yourself, please. Trust me, it's 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 not worth the hassle. But yeah. But yeah, all in all, like, Mono Pyro is not very good, but the core from Mono Pyro can be combined with something else to make a different archetype. And also, I think many people will be able to three-star chambers two and three, but won't be able to three-star chamber one. If that's the case, then you can do that and then start over and play a Mono Pyro team on the first chamber only and try to get your three stars only on this chamber, right? If you're if you're willing to go again after you've three-star the other chambers. If that is what you do, I would actually highly recommend the last slot here to either be a Dendro unit to break the to break the Hydro Shield a bit faster, or uh, Gene to do Sunfire, which is gonna and shred the shields. The crowd shields will get instantly shredded and the hydro shields are actually going to get shredded as well because you're just applying so much. Uh, but that's mainly because this team doesn't necessarily need to have a specific on-fielder, right? So you can play it more quick swappy if you want and like do more ease on Bennett basically. You can also just use a unit like uh, Hutao or Klee or Yoimiya or whoever the f*** you want on the last slot and it's also going to work. Let's now talk about Agave. I've been thinking about maybe doing a video on four star units that have been kind of forgotten by a lot of people who really deserve another another look units that people know can be good but but mostly they're not talked about all that often and so people kind of just forget about them and i'm still not sure if i'll do that but one unit that i would have put in that video is beto and the reason for that is actually what's happening in this of this when there's two enemies or exactly two enemies beto's burst will only bounce between those two which means that each enemy will take a hit from the burst more often which makes her damage quite a bit higher but another thing that a lot of people have kind of just for gore is that beto gives you resistance to interruption and damage reduction and a fairly reasonable amount of those two things obviously it scales with your burst level so if you have c what is it c5 it's a little bit more but at talent level 13 it's 37 percent damage reduction i think it's 34 at talent level 10. that helps you a lot in terms of not getting one shot and i've heard a lot of people talk about how they're struggling against the consecrated beast because they keep dying beto in this abyss is very good actually partly because Aggravate in general is very good, and she can be used in Aggravate, and partly because this is basically the perfect situation for her. Why is Aggravate very good? Well, basically, you want Pyro units, you want Hydro units on the second side. That often leaves you with a lot less options when it comes to your first side. What's a team archetype that does not use Pyro or Hydro units most of the time? Aggravate and Spread. 
Uh, with spread specifically, though, I don't like it quite as much because these enemies have, well, this guy has higher uh, nether resistance and so does this guy. But to a lesser extent, what I'm going to say about Aggravate also applies to spread. The team that I've been using the most uh, when I want to test teams on, on the second side uh, has actually been a Sucrose Aggravate team with Sucrose, Beto, Fischl, and uh, Yao Yao. Obviously, you can get more damage if you replace Yao Yao with someone like Nagida or something like that. But, A, Yao Yao is not all that good on the second side because her Dendro application isn't really good enough to beat the actual, like, Cryo applicators against the Herald. And B, it just makes things more comfortable because she's a healer. So, I, it lets me use other things on the second side, and, uh, yeah. Anyways, Aggravate just dismissed us really well because the main things that Aggravate has is it, it has good single target damage through Fischl, but also it has good AoE damage against enemies that are very easy to group because of the way that Aggravate works with animal units, right? Where you end up getting your Swirl, but in AoE your Swirl will apply Electro, and if it applies Electro on an enemy that's quickened, then it can Aggravate as well, right? So you can use it with an animal unit to very quickly take care of your waves in uh, in the first half and give you a pretty reasonable amount of time left on the second half. It's also very free-to-play friendly because, I mean, in my opinion, the best aggravate team for this abyss is the one that, I, that I've been using, right? Beto, Fischl, Sucrose, yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, again, you can sacrifice defensive utility for more damage, but I do think that yeah, yeah is actually very nice to have nonetheless. In any case, you can also be using Kazuha instead of Sucrose if you don't like using Sucrose, if your Sucrose is in level 90, obviously. But all in all, just Aggravate does really well this Abyss. Uh, spread, uh, like I said, has the like potential issue uh, with the enemies having higher dinner resistance, but if you deal enough damage, it won't matter, so it's still fine. On field Vape, so that's mainly talking about the units like Hu Tao, Yoimiya, Daluk, I guess, and if you really hate yourself, Dea. It actually does well on the second side, but very often you are going to want to use one of your slots for either a Dendro or a Cryo unit instead of an Animal unit if you were going to be doing like a VV Vape thing or instead of a second Hydro unit if you were going to do double Hydro because losing that damage isn't as much of a cripple to your clears as not having the right elements to be able to break the shields. So all in all, on field vape can be pretty good this abyss. Just make sure that you're willing to adapt your team and use quote unquote suboptimal units for DPS in order to be able to get your shield break. Freeze! Freeze is reasonable this abyss. Uh, if you look at the, the matchups that it has, uh, obviously you don't really want to play it on the second side. Uh, you actually can if you really want to. You can just like slap Bennett on a freeze team instead of an animal unit and it is playable. But I think that generally people would lean towards playing those freeze teams on the second side. Uh, it is pretty good on the, on the second side, right? Your biggest issue would be the Dread Bloom Terror Shroom, but again, Chamber 2 is the easiest of the chambers, so it's not that huge of a deal. I would be careful though. Uh, do keep in mind that the Cryo Wobber Flyers have much higher Cryo Resistance, so it might not be the best team to make sure that you get your three stars on side one, and because side, uh, or on Chamber 1, sorry, and because Chamber 1 is the hardest one, basically you're gonna have to be pretty well invested in your freeze team for it to be actually good. Like a team specifically can end up struggling a tiny bit against this, just because her burst is gonna overkill the wave and then she won't have her burst for the next wave. In any case, uh, Freeze is pretty good this abyss. It's probably the best abyss for Freeze that we've had in a little bit, like overall. But yeah, and, and mainly it, if you find yourself dying a lot on the last on the last chamber, uh, it can make it a lot more comfortable. Mono Hydro, honestly don't. You're not gonna be able to get past Hydro Shields with Mono Hydro, obviously. So you'd have to do it first side. But Mono Hydro is a team that's mainly single target, so you're gonna kind of struggle against the AoE. This guy has much higher Hydro resistance, and you're using up all of your Hydro units, which means that you might not have a Hydro unit left for the Pyro Shield on here. This is probably the worst abyss for Mono Hydro that we've ever had. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay, Hyper Carry, obviously, as usual, is gonna depend a lot on which Hyper Carry you're using. Someone like Xiao, someone like Wanderer actually do reasonably well this Abyss because they very much want to be using Bennett, which can take care of the Prowess Shields, and their Swirls can, to some extent, take care of this. So you don't necessarily need to bring a Dendro or a Cryo unit for this. And then the Pyro Shield here can be difficult, but if you're swirling with that, you can just slot in a Hydro unit as your last slot and it can still function. At that point, you're not really playing hyper carry anymore, but point being like those units that are generally hyper carries can be used in that way. Uh, I know that uh, many people like 
uh, Wanderer with Bennett Ferrazon Toma this abyss. The main like challenge with that is going to be the Baptist Spyro Shield, but Wanderer does apply a lot of, uh, of Animo, so you will be able to get through it eventually. But yeah, all in all, they're not my first recommendation, but if you have a really well-built Hyper Carry, you can use them this abyss and it can be fine. And then on the first side, I mean, obviously Hyper Carry Shao will do very well against content that is very AoE, but you really want to use Bennett with that, and that means Bennett's not available for the second side, which is going to make things a lot harder. Other Hyper Carries, you've got something like Raiden, you can use Raiden Hyper. Again, the main potential issue will be getting through the shields, but if you do the Raiden Hyper variation with Fischl, you can kind of brute force the shields pretty easily because Fischl just applies so much Electro in, against enemies when you're proccing her A4 that she's one of the better units to brute force shields that are not of the element you're supposed to be uh, supposed to be breaking with your team. That being said, I still don't think it's like the main thing you should be doing. Obviously, again, right, if you end up using Bennett on the first side, it kind of f over your second side, and uh, if you use it on second side, like, yeah, you can brute force the shields, but it's still not ideal, obviously. Uh, you can also do, like, a, a soup Raiden, where you go Raiden, Bennett, Kazuha, or Jean, and then, like, Sing Uh And that can be fine, but at least fr from the testing I've done, it hasn't felt quite as nice as just using Telling instead of uh, instead of Raiden in the slot. Air Fryer is actually reasonably fine, or surprisingly reasonable, on Chamber 1 first side only. So if you're trying to cheese something here, you can do Air Fryer here, but again, right? Depending on what you use for your Air Fryer, which is uh, burning teams with Animo, you might not have power units you want to be using here, which can kind of f you over. And I think there's generally better options anyways, uh, especially because the Power Walker Flower has additional power resistance. Taser! Taser is one of the few teams that can brute force through this without pyro without too much of a problem because Beto plus Fischl plus Sucrose is a lot of elemental application even when it's not for the right element. This can, like you can struggle a little here because you basically only have Sinto damage but again it's the easier chamber of the of the three and then here again you can brute force the shields somewhat easily just because Fischl is Fischl but if you're playing Taser I would generally recommend playing it on first side rather than on second side and even then very often like if you're playing Playing something like Sucrose Taser, it means that you won't have your Sinto available for the second side, and Sinto is just really nice for the second side, partly because obviously best single target Hydro Shield Breaker in the game, at least as an as an on off fielder, and uh, the damage reduction helps you a lot with uh, with this chamber to just not die because it's very easy to get frozen and just get one shot. All in all, Taser can be good this abyss, but it can also kind of struggle from taking away units you might want to use on the second side. So it's mainly a consideration if the units you'd want to use on the second side let you do Taser, or if you have someone like Kogomi who can be your Hydro for the first side, uh, or something like that. We're Dendro teams. So by that, I mean like Curry, I mean Salad, I mean Sote. Uh, there's a lot of the, of the weird Dendro teams that are good, mainly because Burgeon is really good. So all of the Burgeon related teams will be good. I would be careful though, uh, the Curry teams with Toma, so something like this, or if you want a healer option, something like this. Your power application is very slow with this, so you're going to be very tight on the first chamber, and it can be pretty hard to get past it in time. So it's not the version I'd recommend. I do like something like on-field Bennett, right, in a Taser team, or sorry, in a, in a, in a Curry team. I like something like Thundering Furry with on-field Razor if you have C6 Bennett. In this abyss specifically, you can do Thundering Mommy instead, just because, right, again, Beto has damage reduction. The way that damage reduction stacks is it stacks additively, which means that the more of it you have, the more invulnerable you become from additional damage reduction. With both of them, you're basically like, you can't die when both of their damage reduction things are active. Even if all three are hitting you at the same time, it's not gonna out damage your Bennett's heal. It's just a lot of damage reduction. And also because the Electro hits enemies a little bit more like flexibly, even if they're not necessarily all at the same time together, it helps with their shield breaking a little bit more than Razor does. And also uh, a third upside is because you still keep your Electro things when you swap out, uh, you have more flexibility in rotations for this, which means when the uh, when the Hydro Shield comes out, you can swap to Nahida and break it instantly. When the Cryo Shield comes out, you can swap to Bennett and break it instantly. So you have a little bit more flexibility in those rotations, which is really nice. In this abyss specifically, I think uh, the version with Beto actually feels a little bit better than the version with Razor, but the version with Razor 
Ranger is still very good. Uh, you can also do the same thing with Kuki, with Raiden, with uh, Electro MC, but generally Beto and Razor would be the, the main two. Outside of Curry, you also have Sauté, which is something like this. It's a Virgin team with Animo, and it's called Sauté because Sauté means like jump, and it's mainly played with Kazuha, so you jump. Get it? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they also do pretty well this abyss. Uh, you get even better shield breaking because you can also abuse the, the swirls. One team that I have actually liked a lot is this one where you do, you, you build like 180, 190 ER on child and you do 15 second rotations with a melee burst and you just basically vape your melee burst every rotation, which is like with my investment somewhere between 250 and 300k damage. And then you have Kazuha triggering Virgin after that while you stay melee, melee sense on child. Uh, it's felt pretty nice. Uh, because it front loads the damage with that melee burst, which means that against this guy, you can get a lot of damage in between his shields, which is nice. And the biggest upside is that you get to be able to use Sinso on your other side if you do this. Other weird Ender Team Salad is not all that great this abyss because again, right, it doesn't deal with the shields all that well and it takes away a lot of units that are good on the second side. Oven, uh, which is Virgin Teams with Cryo. Oven does really well. The Cryo is even more shield breaking on the on the Hydro Shields and this lets you keep the, her the Heralds grouped up much better in the first chamber so it can make things feel a lot more comfortable. The, you're a bit less affected by the RNG. Over Vape! Overvape is fine, right? Overvape is uh, basically just a vape team with Electro. But if you're gonna slot in something, it's usually better to slot in something that's good for shield breaking. So I don't like it as much as playing something with Virgin or something with uh, Vape Melt. Right, if you're playing a, a vape team like this, you could do something like Raiden National, you could do something like Fischl National, but because of the shields, I'd recommend just doing something like either Kea, Rosaria, or if you have Nahida, you can use Nahida. National, very good. You've got the elements to deal with the Pyro Shield on the last one in single target with the Cryo Shield on the first one in AOE. And basically, you don't do the traditional animal variations. You just slot in a shield breaker again, right? Like I, like I just mentioned, either one of the Cryo units or uh, one of the Dendro units. I say that generally, if you don't have Nahida, I'd lean towards the Cryo units a bit more because the other Dendro units, Dendro application isn't quite as good. I've had better results with Cryo. Don't play this. This has always been the biggest bait in the game. Chongyun National was never good. Play something like K.O. or Rosaria, please. And then finally, you've got Soup, which... Uh, basically takes the baseline over vape and just has an animal unit and for the same reason as why I don't like over vape that much this abyss I don't like this that much this abyss either. That basically does it for the archetypes. I think there's a few hyper carries that I haven't mentioned. Oh, I guess mono geo teams. You can always brute force shields with geo because geo does a bit of damage to basically every shield but the shields are really tanky and it's gonna take a while and it's just not the thing I'd recommend. Uh, if you are gonna be playing mono geo I'd still recommend having like three Geo and a Pyro or something like that. But even then, like on second half, it doesn't feel great. On first half, it's fine. Not necessarily the best team, but not like unplayable either. And list teams don't really allow for the flexibility to really be able to get past the, the second side very easily. So you'd have to use her on the first side, but Playing her against Walper Flower is kind of like, I mean, if she's really, really, really highly invested, it can be fine. And also against the Beast, it's not that great either. Not my recommendation. Ganyu Melt. Uh, Ganyu Melt can be fine. Your main issue is going to be the uh, the Pyro Shield on the last chamber, but it is actually very good on the first chamber in the second side, which is cool. And you can be fine on, on, on first half as well. I think that kind of does it for the Hypers. But yeah, so that basically does it. Now, let's talk about chamber-specific advice. Here's the basic idea. When I'm talking about here, we're basically assuming that over there is north, over here is south, west, here, east, here. The first wave of Whopper flowers, they're basically gonna spawn around here, as you can see, right? They spawn somewhat far from each other, so if you just stay here, it's gonna be hard to hit multiple of them at once. So what you wanna do is you wanna go far enough away from them that they decide to come to you. The best way to do that is to just run backwards. And then they all group themselves like this. The second wave of Whopper Flowers will spawn in the same line, but instead of it being on this side, it's gonna be on this side. Now, if you want them to go towards you, if you just stay somewhere like here, the one that spawns here will be far enough that it will. The one that spawns here will be far enough that it will. The one that spawns here will be close enough that it will just be doing the range attacks. So you want to make sure that you're standing far enough backwards that it's actually it actually has to get closer to you. You can also decide to go here in order to make it easier to position yourself for the next wave. Let's put that in practice. Right? Head backwards. 
Start killing your things. Very cool. And because I'm so far from them, they again teleport to me and they all group themselves up. I'll kill this wave. And we're done with the Walter Flowers. After that, there's gonna be Constructs. Now, this guy can hit you with a range attack. This guy can hit you with a range attack. This guy only has the attack that has a somewhat limited range. So what you wanna do when you get here is you wanna immediately head towards here so that they group themselves up. Now, obviously, because I was explaining it, I didn't do it immediately, so it wasn't the best. Now, I guess the Wolper Flowers, every time you kill a Wolper Flower, a new one will respawn until they're, they've all spawned. And same thing for the Construct, every time you kill the Construct, a new one will spawn. But that won't happen when you're on the last Wolper Flowers, it's not gonna make the next Construct spawn. So here, if I kill one Wolper Flower, two Wolper Flowers, the first two of the next wave have already spawned in the Last one takes a little bit longer, right? Because I didn't kill them all at the same time. However, if I do the same thing here, the constructs, constructs don't spo start spawning until the last Walper Flower is dead. So keep that in mind in order to know when you have to go to the next place. But yeah, so here, you can just head here, start casting your stuff, get Oz, get Beto's ult, and then run towards them and just like that, they're very nicely grouped together, and your AoE can hit them without too much of a problem. Again, right, we've got one that spawned already, so we want to make sure that we try to kill them all around the same time. And, of course, it lived with 1 HP. Please. Okay. That's what happens when I talk while I'm, while I'm playing, but it's okay. Okay, now here, they might actually have enough time to go invisible, because the next one kind of took a while, but... You obviously don't want to let that happen. If they go invisible, usually that's a reset. But this time I'll put things in practice and I won't pause to explain things. Just so you can see what a run on this floor is supposed to look like at a baseline. Oops. How do I get a f***ing cryo swirl? God damn it, man. It's fine. Okay, well that was f***ing scuffed, but it's okay. Sometimes things get scuffed. It is, it is what it is. Okay. Okay, get them all to spawn. Get them all to group. And... Get them all to die. Pretty similar thing happens on the second wave. The mages spawn relatively far from each other, and if you want them to be close together, you can just run away, and they'll both teleport somewhere around the same place. Personally, I generally prefer running uh, west a little bit, because that's where one of the Cryo Heralds will spawn. Generally, it just feels better to start closer to the Cryo one than to the Hydro ones, but you can either go run left or right or backwards, it doesn't really matter that much. So, get far enough away from them that they teleport, up. All right, and then you've got this wave, and honestly, on this one, it's kind of just really cringe. And there's only so much I can tell you other than just kill them make sure that if you're playing bennett you're not getting one shot by that uh, downward thrust attack because it does uh do a lot of damage when you're inside of bennett burst but yeah so here I'm kind of not playing all that well, but I have enough investment in my teams that it won't be enough of a problem to 
stop me from... Of course. What? That's not Kazuha. Huh? that I would try to keep in mind is as long as you're not getting hit by the Hydro one, you probably won't die. The problem is, if you get hit by the Cryo one, they'll yoink your stamina and then you won't be able to dodge the Hydro one. Okay, here you have the Dendro Shroom, uh, which is very straightforward. You just hit, hit it until it dies. Uh, if you have an Electro unit, it's gonna get angry and then it'll do one of three attacks here. One attack, he starts doing like in place and it does a lot of damage, so you gotta be careful. The attack that he just did is the best one of the three because he starts hitting, but uh, he starts hitting you, but only if you're really far away from him. So you just go close to him and everything is fine. Uh, and then finally, there's a third attack where he starts running towards you, which is by far the worst attack because, well, he'll run past you and then he'll take a while and he'll do it again and he'll come back and it's just really cringe. Okay, so this is the attack that does a lot of damage, but it's very short which means that you just let him let him get angry for a little bit and then just kill him. Here against like the Thunder Manifestation, pretty similar thing where there's not that many tricks to stay close to him and do your best to do a lot of damage. Uh, also, don't be afraid to like change your rotations when you're against him versus normally. So usually my team is supposed to try to vape Child's Burst, but obviously I'm not going to vape because I can't apply Pyro here. Yeah, here also I'm losing my blooms because of his Electro application. It's very cringe. I kind of f***ed it up there, so I hope I can actually do this in time. I might not. The reality is these attacks are RNG. I've seen a lot of people say that like there's a specific pattern, there isn't. His attacks are RNG. You can get lucky, you can get unlucky. I'm pretty sure I got a bit too unlucky there. I'm just gonna restart. But yeah, if you have a team that relies on a specific reaction that the Thundering Manifestation kind of prevents you from doing, like I do, you can kind of just reset if you get that attack because it's not that big of a deal. Sorry, like there's just not really much advice to give here other than do damage and if you get unlucky attack patterns you can restart, but unless the attack patterns are really unlucky, generally this is the easiest of the three chamber, uh, the three th chambers. I don't know why, I don't know where my S went there, but it definitely did not ha- oh fuck. Oh, where, where, where did he go? And then, last chamber, you'll have a Hydro and a Dendro Beast. As a general rule, the Hydro Beast doesn't move that much and has a bunch of range attacks, and the Dendro Beast moves a lot and has mostly melee attacks, so you want to basically just always stay as close to the Hydro one as possible in order to try to keep them grouped. The Hydro Beast has two attacks where it moves a decent amount, well, three attacks where it moves a decent amount. One that it will only do if you're far from it, so don't be far from it because it's very annoying. And then another two, one where it does, like, who? and then it rolls on its side. This one's cringe because it'll never end up in the same place that it started. So usually when it does that attack, that's unlucky and they get themselves ungrouped unless the Dendro one does an attack that matches well with it. The other one is like, a, I don't know exactly how many, I think it's five hit combo, where it kind of just goes in a circle and comes back to where it was. And that's actually the best attack it can do. You go towards, yeah. This was just like a, a melee swipe. Okay, so it's now doing the like the one where it goes in a circle and then comes back in the middle. This is the best attack. When it does that, you're very happy. Yeah, I 
don't want to use. Yeah, I don't want to use you anyway. Okay. Uh, on the next wave, the hyper one spawns on on the the opposite side, as it did on the first wave, right? So just make sure you're not waiting on the wrong one. Uh, usually, yeah, so this is the annoying attack that basically always makes it group, uh, ungroup, because, um, it's only a two-hit attack, and it's very crit. And this is the one where it will regroup itself. Ooh. It does do a decent amount of damage, so be careful about that. The Dendro Beast, right, has, oh, fuck, no, ain't no way I can, oh my god. Okay, I got it. Both of them also have the attack where after they do it, they leave behind the thing you can break. The Dendro one will disappear and then jump from the sky. And then after it's jumped from the sky and dealt damage, it will also deal damage after a brief period. So you're gonna have to dodge that twice. The Hydro one attacks in a circle and then another attack goes through, which is the outline of the circle. So if you manage to iframe the one in the middle and you stay in the middle, you won't get hit by the second one. And if you stand outside of it and after the first one goes through, you dash into the middle of it, you won't get hit by the second one either. Now finally here, there's not that much to say. It's always gonna have Cryo Shield first, then Hydro Shield, then Pyro Shield. So try your best to have whatever elements you need available when you need them. But other than that, it's pretty squishy. So just do as much damage uh, as possible. Oh, I fucked up. I didn't get my hydro swirl. Ah, kingdom. Yeah, I really fed up. I, I missed my hydro swirl. So now I'm not actually gonna get my things in time, I don't think. Yeah, I'm gonna get his shield. Fuck. I got greedy. But again, right, as you can see, it's taking a lot of damage even if I'm missing a lot of time in the DPS windows. Uh, it is a very squishy enemy. don't want to clear just yet. Keep in mind, at the end of the day, you will be at the mercy of RNG quite a bit. Uh, so it's very possible that you play well and you just get a bad run because the beasts ended up not group grouping themselves very well or just doing a lot of cringe attacks. Sometimes you're just gonna have to reset and your times will be like 30 seconds faster just because you got better luck. I feel like I'm just getting really lucky just because I kind of want to show how much variance there is just because the game hates me. So the one time I want to get unlucky, I'm lucky. But it's fine. Cool. Yeah, so this is the special attack that it does. If you iframe the one in the middle, you're not going to get hit by the second hit. And you can actually cancel these out of that attack if you have a, enough stagger, but it's very hard to do, so you don't try to don't try to rely on it too much. Probably could have been a little bit faster if I focused on doing my stuff properly instead of talking, but still a decent run overall. You still have a special place in my heart. I've been spreading balls propaganda to my non-Genshin friends and it's working. We love to hear it. Can I please get a hydro? Thank you. I'm not gonna be able to melee burst here because I'm not gonna have enough time. Please. Okay. Uh.
That was not very good, but it's fine. Oh, really? I fucked up my timing, it's fine. Oh well, not my best runs, but uh, hopefully you get the idea. Hopefully that's a little bit helpful in terms of how to how to play your runs. I mean, obviously I don't think I need to show runs with uh, like Nahida National or stuff like that. I did a few runs with uh, uh, only four star units already. So if you wanna watch one of these, check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Jeff 77. But yeah, that basically does it. This abyss is painful and i really hope that instead of just making the enemies more cringe they do actual challenges don't give us three enemies with random attacks that sometimes you just literally can't dodge because you have a cooldown on your dash give us one enemy that has random attacks where the attacks are supposed to be dodgeable but hard to dodge or something like that like that, that just don't be cringe oh yo just don't stop being cringe anyways that's basically it I hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a thing or two. Uh, as usual, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, see you guys on the next one. Bye, YouTube.